Welcome back, Grade 10s, to the second part of the second session for the Winter School. Before we move on and look at how to determine the relative formula mass of compounds, let's just revise what is understood by relative atomic mass and how is that relative atomic mass determined for the different elements. So this video from Fuse School will help revise this important concept for you. The relative isotopic mass is the mass of an element in relation to carbon-12. The reason that this is the isotopic mass is because some elements have different isotopic forms. For example, chlorine can be found as chlorine-35 and chlorine-37. The isotopic mass is not the mass number which appears on the periodic table. The number seen on the periodic table is the relative atomic mass, or the AR. The relative atomic mass of an element is defined as the average mass of the naturally occurring isotopes of the element relative to the mass of an atom of carbon-12. On the periodic table, it is the same number as the mass number. In basic terms, it is the average mass of the isotopic forms of the element. When we think about this, we must remember that isotopic forms of elements have different values for their naturally occurring abundance on Earth. For example, let's look at the isotopic forms of chlorine. Some chlorine atoms have a mass of 35, and some have a mass of 37. In most cases, to take a simple average, you would just add the values together and then divide by the number of values. In this case, it would be 35 plus 37 divided by 2, and you would get an average of 36. But this is not how you calculate the relative atomic mass. We need to remember that we are talking about number of atoms. There are a certain number of chlorine atoms with a mass of 35 and a certain number of chlorine atoms with a mass of 37. However, within a sample, the levels of each isotope are not equal. So we take this into account when we are calculating the relative atomic mass so that we are calculating a weighted average. Naturally occurring chlorine is made up of 75% chlorine-35 and 25% chlorine-37. This can be shown to you on a graph to show abundance data, where the relative isotopic mass is shown along the x-axis and the relative abundance is shown on the y-axis. So say we had a simple sample of 100 atoms of chlorine. We would have 75 atoms of chlorine-35 and 25 atoms of chlorine-37 we first find out the total mass of the sample. We do this by multiplying the mass of each atom by the number of atoms present for each isotope, and then we add them together. For chlorine-35, there are 75 atoms, and for chlorine-37, there are 25 atoms. So the mass of 100 atoms would be 75 times 35 plus 25 times 37, 3,550. The mass of one atom will be the mass of the total number of atoms divided by the number of atoms. So the mass of one atom of chlorine would be 3550 divided by 100, 35.5. The relative atomic mass has a value closer to 35 because there are more atoms of chlorine 35 than chlorine 37. It is a weighted average. So the relative atomic mass of an element is defined as the average mass of the naturally occurring isotopes of the element relative to the mass of an atom of carbon-12. On the periodic table, it is the same number as the mass number. The number is a weighted average, and when calculating its value, the proportion of an isotope in a sample must be taken into account. So, grade tens, I hope that um, as you watch this video, you noted that it's extremely important to understand the link between a, a single atom and many atoms, because even the many atoms is used to calculate the relative atomic mass. Now, let's use the concept of relative atomic mass to calculate the relative formula mass. Okay, but how would you find the mass of one particle of a compound? 
okay, you would need to use the formula mass. So, the relative formula mass of a compound is calculated by adding together the relative atomic mass values of all the atoms in its formula. Okay, so, um, I'm not going to deal with the mole now because you will deal with that later. But let's look at some examples. Calculating the relative formula mass. So the relative atomic mass of an element shows its mass compared with the mass of other atoms of the element. So the relative atomic mass of carbon is 12, while the relative atomic mass of magnesium is 24. This means that each magnesium atom has twice the mass of the carbon atom. That is why we use these relative formula masses, because it's an easy comparison. If carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12, and uh, magnesium has a relative atomic mass of 24, it does mean that a magnesium atom is twice, or its mass is twice that of carbon. So, as I said, what you do is we add all the relative atomic masses together in a compound. So, let's look at this question. We'll look at these two examples. Uh, what is the formula mass for carbon monoxide? Okay, find carbon. Um, there is carbon over there. It's 12. Let me just see if I can move this so you can see that. There is carbon, it is 12. Oxygen is 16. So if we add the relative atomic masses together, 12 plus 16 is 28. So let's go back and see if that is indeed the correct answer. So reveal the answer. 12 plus 16, add them together, is 28 relative uh, mass units, um, or the Dalton. Dalton is often used. Let's look at the next example. Okay, what about sodium oxide? Okay, so coming back, let's go to our periodic table. Sodium is 23. Now there are two sodiums, so it would be 23 plus 23, which is 46, plus oxygen, which is 16, that's uh, 56, that's 62 uh, mass units. So it was 23 plus 23 plus 16. Okay, let's go back and reveal our answer. And there we have it. The mass of sodium is 23, oxygen is 16, but there are two uh, sodiums, so it's 23 times 2 plus 16. So that is how we find the relative formula mass. Now, sometimes you will see it's referred to as the relative molecular mass, but that can only be applied to molecules like water or the carbon monoxide, but it can't apply to the sodium oxide because that is an ionic compound. So to avoid confusion, just call it the relative formula mass because for carbon monoxide, the formula is CO, and that's how we calculated the relative formula mass. And for sodium oxide, it's Na2O. Here are a few more examples. The relative formula mass of water, H2O, is 16 plus 1 plus 1 is 18. Sodium hydroxide, NaOH, 23 plus 16 plus 1 is 40. Magnesium hydroxide, which is MgOH2, uh, that means that we have two OHs. So it's 24 for the magnesium, 16 for the oxygen, plus 1 for the hydrogen, but that 16 plus 1, which is 17, is times 2. So that would be 58 uh, atomic mass units. And that is how we can find the formula mass for compounds. Great tens, it's now your turn to apply what I've just covered to find the relative formula mass of the various compounds I'm going to be showing you now. So what you are going to do now on the worksheet is you're going to do the same, you're going to do it for the following compounds.
So, what I've done is I've shown you here what the iron or what the simplest unit looks like, the structure of the lattice of barium 2 chloride and barium 2 chloride will consist of one barium atom and I've given you the number of protons and neutrons there and um, the two two chloride ions so you must please find the relative formula mass for barium chloride okay then if I have one mole whatever that mass would be so one mole of barium chloride particles so if I come back to the diagram it means one mole of those units there or one mole of those uh, units there and that would mean it would be one barium and two chloride ions so I would need uh, 6 times 10 to the 23 of that and then 6 times 10 to the 23 of that and 6 times 10 to the 23 of that all giving me one mole so you are to please also find the formula mass for calcium 2 chloride and there you can see I've given you the uh, Bohr diagrams and what would be the mass of one mole of calcium chloride do the same for potassium bromide potassium iodide a water molecule and then acetic acid or vinegar so you're going to find the relative formula masses for all of these compounds um, on the worksheet So great tends to end the session I just want to check your understanding with something that might have been confusing when we looked at the barium chloride for example you saw that one barium chloride formula unit had one barium ion and two chloride ions which actually means that I have if you have one mole of barium chloride and we looked at the ions we would have one mole of barium ions but two moles of chloride ions so how can that be? Well, let's look at this example of a dozen cars. If I have a dozen cars, that means I have 12 cars. But if I asked how many dozen wheels do I have, we know that each car has four wheels. So four times 12 is 48 wheels. So I have four dozen wheels because I have one dozen cars. And each car contains four wheels. I will have four dozen wheels. 12 times 4 is 48. That is four dozen. So just the same. If I have one mole of barium chloride, then I have one mole of barium ions, but two moles of chloride ions. But together they make up one formula unit, which is one mole of barium chloride. Just in the same way, a dozen cars will have four dozen wheels. I hope that helps you understand it. Mm -hmm.